Who is Raytheon? What do they do? And why was Raytheon at the South Pole? My answer to the question of who is Raytheon yeah. is the devil incarnate in corporate form. I am not a fan of theirs. The damage that they did to my crew from putting us in proximity to these uh, systems is a sin. Yeah. Um, we've already lost crew hands from my crew mm -hmm. that were too young to die. Raytheon is not doing right by the people of the South Pole Station. Mm -hmm. Raytheon is not doing right by the people of this planet. Mm -hmm. um, they're a military industrial contracting corporation. They kill people for a living. Why are they in charge of the maintenance at the South Pole Station? There's a lot of maintenance companies out there that don't make weapons. How come every single person that gets this contract makes weapons also? So what were you told that this facility in the South Pole you were assigned to was? I was for? told it was a science facility. I was told that the ice cube neutrino detector operated in a passive capacity. I was told that the ELF system that was there, which a lot of people know is for submarine communications, um, I was told it was off, dysfunctional, not up and running. I discovered in my time there um, that it's absolutely running. And I've been doing as much research as I can and connecting with as many people that are knowledgeable on these topics to let the world know what can actually occur um, with these systems when they're not operating in their simple primary function. Um, the military obviously has to do things that we don't know about, so they have to present it in a way that doesn't explain what the secondary or tertiary activities are. On presentation, it's all science. But I, I think that it's also the next step that that's, it's just a functioning facility. This isn't just testing and, and, no. and, and researching. This is actually a, a weapon. You're saying it's a weapon location. Like it is. This is the system. This. We need to send troops. This is what I discussed <laughs> mm -hmm. when I went to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, with the folks at uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee and Arrow. Do you um, think they were doing this uh, in cooperation with the United States government or... Or outside of cooperation? I believe this is outside. What, what I was getting at with these gentlemen is at the end of our conversations, everybody agreed we need to figure out what to do next now that we know there are rogue factions operating these monopolized technologies completely without oversight. And then the next question that they asked um, was who's running it? And the problem is no one seems to know. Breakdown is the United States' own company. Correct. But Antarctica is not the United States. So who, who actually has, I mean, there's no, there's no police department in Antarctica. So who actually has jurisdiction? Nobody. Nobody yeah. According to the United States government, Antarctica is considered the wilderness. You're at a facility that not just testing and research weapons, but actually mm -hmm. deploying uh, weapons. At the time, I was not cognizant of that, other okay. than there was a period of time where I did discern that the ELF was running. And that certainly, okay. you know, got my 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 ears on to pay attention. What I'm getting at is I want to understand, like, with the position you have, that gave you some kind of unprecedented access to see everything because you're the maintenance guy, right? You get to go everywhere. My primary role um, was as a, a plumber and maintenance guy. My secondary role was um, a Team 2 Fire Brigade uh, co-lead. So basically, in that capacity, if the alarms went off, I, I was the person selected to be the first person to enter the hot zone every time. Um, I had to have, um, I had to be cognizant of what was going on in every room. I had to um, manufacture and go through emergency action plans to make sure that my crew was safe in any of the spaces, depending on what was going on, what type of um, uh, de-energizing of equipment would have to go down, you know, if suppression systems kicked on, there was, there was a lot to cover. And with that being said, I had to have a key that got me immediate access into every single space if need be, in case of an emergency. I know no one else had more access, and I can only think of maybe a couple of people that would have had equal. So the vast majority of people didn't see much of that facility. With this access, and you're getting to see everything that's going on, when did you first realize that something wasn't right, that you were, you were, you were there for one thing, but something else is happening here that, that you were not aware of? Technically, because of my experience in submarine service back in 1994 yeah. and, and knowing what Raytheon was all about, um, 
I was concerned just right off the bat. Can you explain what, what an ELF system is? ELF, uh, and I always get the E wrong, people crush me. It either stands for um, extreme or extra low frequency. Uh, the ELF system is embedded in the ice. It's a, a miles and miles long antenna array um, that's embedded in the ice. I was told it was off. I understand from my submarine time that it can be a communication system for submarines. So I can appreciate that they don't want to tell people that it's on, um, sure. but it's on. And since then, I'm now learning that there are more than the, the singular primary use of communication. There are tertiary secondary items that can be done with ELF systems. I just came across the work of a gentleman named Craig Roger, mm -hmm. who's discussing what's going on with the British Antarctic Service and what they're referring to on their side is a, a VLF system. Now, it begs the question, you know, if, if we're investing billions of dollars on this science and they're investing billions of dollars on the same science, um, that seems a little bit inefficient to me as far as science goes. But if it's a weapons system, well, of course, each nation's going to fund their own. What, what, uh, what do you think the ELF was being used for? They were utilizing the ELF system to observe the magnetosphere of the planet was one of the items that I had figured out. So between the ELF system observing, at the very least, the magnetosphere and or potentially from what I'm learning through um, Craig Rogers' potential manipulations, and or if the ice cube neutrino detector is in its transmit capacity, it's almost like they're messing with the magnetosphere, but they need to attend to how much, mm -hmm. you know, that it has to be observable. You don't want to, you know, play with fire. Can you explain to the audience what, it, what a direct energy weapon actually is? Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, we're familiar with firearms and projectiles, right. um, but effectively, that gun does one thing, fires one caliber of one bullet. Um, directed energy weapons systems are more multifaceted, mm -hmm. which is great, because now you can, you know, call it something else, you know? Oh, that's not a gun, it's a bullet carrier. It just receives, you know, if you don't discuss the fact that that gun can transmit, if you only discuss that the magazine can receive bullets, and you mm -hmm. don't discuss that it can transmit them, well, it's a, it's a misconception, it's a lie. That's a gun, that's a weapon, not a bullet holder. You know, so the, the directed energy weapons are, I mean, you could say acoustics, mm -hmm. you could say laser beams. I spoke at an event mm -hmm. this past summer and I ran into a gentleman, Dr. Simeon Hine, and in his, his presentation, he was discussing you know, UFOs, ball lightning, earthquakes, and the way that he presented, I, I got up afterwards and I started asking him some questions because he was discussing how a, a lot of times when there's an earthquake, people discuss orbs, like, you know, just popping up out of nowhere, energy. Yeah. And I inquired to him, I said, wouldn't, you know, I said science to me, my understanding, you know, mathematics, things like that. Um, when something's harmonious with nature, it works backwards and forwards. I said, if an earthquake can discharge energy, so wouldn't it make sense that we can apply energy to generate an earthquake? And he said, Ab absolutely. So this, this is, you know, you can think of it like Tesla technology. It can also be energy delivery, which is again, you know, 100 years ago, Nikola Tesla was considered a genius, and the ability to deliver energy wirelessly right. is legitimate, you know? Um, so um, weapons, conventional weapons, right? You know, you launch a mortar. You're delivering energy to another location that expands mm -hmm. rapidly and causes damage. When this in, is simply an energy delivery system that's unconventional. And when that energy arrives and expands, does whatever it wants to do, you you have an effective weapon. And we've been, you know, the United States, Russia, China, mm -hmm. right? You know, lots of people, different people around the world are, are all having their their weapons manufacturers mm -hmm. uh, testing, developing mm -hmm. the latest and greatest mm -hmm. weapons, and uh, many of those are direct energy weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I'll just ask directly: Do you mm -hmm. would you say Raytheon has been involved in the development of direct energy weapons? I would. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you couldn't stop me from saying that. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, uh, that's. Um, I mean, at the South Pole location, did you observe uh, anything that would be considered direct energy weapon? 
Absolutely. So we have a building there called Arrow, A-R-O, okay. at the South Pole Station. Okay on the outskirts of the property. It's called Arrow, the Atmospheric Research Observatory, and it's under the pretense of checking the cleanliness of the air. Okay. Um, is one of the buildings that I regularly had to inspect. And I mean, with regularity, I could be approaching the building and I would see this green laser coming out of the building and shooting into the cosmos. I mean, I'm not a weapons expert uh, for technical advanced technologies, but uh, uh, yeah, looks like that might be a direct energy weapon. That, right? Yeah, it kind of fits the bill. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think it is? I mean, when you see, uh, when so it's primary, working, like... primary role, I believe, does have something to do with atmospheric observations. Okay. Um, but what I'm doing, trying to connect the dots, now I'm learning that there are things called chemical lasers and superfluids. Okay. Another thing that we had copious amounts of at the South Pole Station, um, I believe it was about a half a million gallons at the time. I believe they've since lowered the supply, but it was um, chilled helium, chilled down to four degrees Kelvin for standard storage in the bulk capacity. And then they would utilize it on the focal planes of the South Pole Telescope and drop it down to a quarter of a degree. What's, uh, what's, Kelvin. What's the what's zero the, degrees Kelvin is z no molecular motion anymore. Okay, so it's so like, this is cold. This is super, super, super like cold. minus hundreds of degrees. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, expansion rate of four hundred and fifty to one. You get a leak. This thing's a hydrogen bomb. It's yeah. a big, big deal. Um, so I believe that something to do with the arrow laser and the chilled helium, known as a superfluid. Superfluids are new to the science community, and it's almost like they operate out of the standard model of physics. So these are things that I'm researching and trying to connect the dots on, um, but certainly fit in the range of modern directed energy weapon potentials. I mean, we have decades of research for people looking into the things that I my eyes are looking at and people are telling me don't exist. I don't think either one of us would disagree that the United States and Raytheon should be developing weapons to protect. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I believe, I mean, I joined the military for a right. reason. I, I took the oath to yeah. defend the constitution, the nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Yeah, absolutely. So I do believe in that. So I'm not saying Raytheon's good or bad, but that alone doesn't make them bad. What I, that, no, that alone does not make them bad. It's what they've done right. um, to get themselves outside of governmental oversight. That's where That's I have bad. a problem because now um, we're left to trust them, which right. I don't. For me, as an American, I want the United States of America to have the biggest, mm -hmm. baddest weapons on the planet and, and mm -hmm. because... That's how we maintain our safety and security. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it is our government's responsibility to have oversight mm -hmm. over those weapons because now if they're outside of the oversight of the United States mm -hmm. government, then it's whoever's the highest bidder. And it could be used for nefarious reasons. So I, I'm in agreement with that. And as, as well. an American, I'm sure that you would be um, very upset if you found out that these contractors were using the weapons that your tax dollars went towards against you. Very much so. Right? So if we don't have that level of oversight... How do you know mm. what's going on? How do you know you're not being negatively impacted by these systems right now? Who are we seeing manifesting the symptoms of the Havana syndrome? A lot of DOD personnel mm -hmm. right off the bat. Okay. My perspective, from my understanding of mm. everything going on, everybody. So everyone could be exposed to it, but the people that are going to be closest to it are going to be the most exposed and Absolutely. have the most results, which if right. you're working at these facilities like mm -hmm. yourself. It, it, you think see. of it like being in, in battle in a crossfire, right. right? The closer you are to the crossfire, the more likely you are of getting injured. These are invisible weapons. Yeah. Are you in the crossfire? You're not consenting to being exposed. Correct. By these things. Yeah. Yeah. And so you said you've had not only people sick, but you've seen people... I, 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 I travel a lot and you'd be surprised how many times I can cross paths with people from the United States Antarctic program. And in those travels and communications, I, I came across someone from the program and he informed me that um, one of my crew had passed away. Yeah. Um, completely um, peculiar. Nobody knows exactly why he was way too young to die. Um, but it, it concerns me um, that it's a, a proximity issue and that Raytheon is lying to us. I mean, there's a history of the United States government of course, putting people in harm's way, <laughs> yeah. and you know, telling them, you know, oh, totally. This this is a a, yeah. a test to your benefit. Tell me about the Ice Cube neutrino detector. The Ice Cube neutrino detector was a facility that was being built, if I remember correctly, for about a decade prior to my arrival. 
When I showed up for the summer season in November of 2010, we were basically wrapping up construction on the elevated station and the ice cube neutrino detector. In February of 2011, the ice cube neutrino detector went online. Mm. That was when the Christchurch earthquakes occurred. We were responsible for that. There was an email that was uh, apparently leaked out from Hillary Clinton where she was discussing mm -hmm. the Christchurch earthquakes. And I'm paraphrasing, but she had written something to the effect of, glad it happened and on cue. It sounds to me like there was intention, um, even though I was actually told it was friendly fire. That's what I was told. Like an accident. It was a. It was. It's a. It's a brand new. It's a, it's a brand new weapon. Yeah. Right. You get a brand new gun. You bring it out of the factory. You bring it to the range. You aim for the bullseye. You pull the trigger. Do you hit the bullseye? Maybe. Maybe not. If you're off, you got to make a correction. That's what I was told. Which you know. So when you said friendly fire, they tested this weapon and hit Christchurch. It's not what they were intending not to hit. Intended. Was what I was told. So friendly fire, to your knowledge, was a uh, was this was this earthquake induction, earthquake machine, uh, something that the United States government was unaware of? My observations yeah. from that conversation is they don't really know what's going on. They don't know who's really at the helm. Sometimes those third-party contractors are not contractors at all. They're the United States government. Yes, there's nothing yeah. stopping Raytheon, technically, from hiring a crew of Navy SEALs. Yeah, exactly. And now they're not Navy SEALs anymore, mm -hmm. which is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that I'm aware that other people at that facility were operating under fake hats. What was it that happened that you saw? Like, I have to say something. Was that Raytheon screwed my crew over once again at a level that I had not considered. Mm -hmm. And now I was watching people that I love mm -hmm. dwindle. I'm learning that people are dying. You should be informed to the mm -hmm. dangers of any work environment. Yeah, We were not properly informed to what we were dealing with in the slightest. Mm 